Once you've conducted your research, ideally you would want to share it with the world. And the way to do that is to get your research published. Now, the moment you think about the publication process, some questions come to mind. How do I go about choosing a journal? What metrics do I need to keep in mind? How do I make sure that the journal that I'm choosing is not a fake or predatory one? And finally, what does the peer review process look like? Well, let's find out. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal, I'm the founder of WiseUp and in this video, I'm going to share with you all about the journal publication process. So without further delay, let's get started. The first thing you should do when it comes to choosing a journal is to look at your literature. When you're conducting research, you would have gone through an extensive literature survey and chances are your literature is going to be quite close or similar to the work that you've done. So look at your literature and see in which journals those papers have been published. And that will give you a starting point in selecting your journals. Another great way to shortlist potential journals is to use a journal suggester tool offered by publication houses. For instance, you can use the suggester tool offered by Taylor and Francis Group. All you need to do is to input the abstract of your article and it will help you screen out the most suitable journal out of the 2000 journals that they have in their portfolio. So based on the literature and the journal suggested tool, make a list of 10 to 12 journals you would like to consider for publication. Once you've decided which journal you would like to publish in, the next thing is to make sure that they are not fake or predatory. For that purpose, you should always choose journals that fall under journal indexations. These indexations basically prepare a list of journals which are not fake and are of good scientific quality. In fact, they also have categorizations within them from Q1 to Q4, with Q1 being the top 25% of journals in that category and Q4 occupying the bottom 25%. So it means that if you are publishing your work in a Q1 journal, that means you're publishing in the top 25% or the most prestigious category of journals. Anyway, the important thing is to make sure that your journal falls under some indexation. The popular ones are Web of Science, Scopus, PubMed, and specifically for open access, there is DOA, which is Directory of Open Access, which will ensure that you are publishing in a reputed open access journal and not a fake one. Once you have clarity on the journal reputation, the next thing is to make sure that the journal covers the topic on which you are planning to publish in. So for that purpose, go to each individual journal's website and check the journal's scope, type of article they publish, format of publication, any word limit that they have, etc. to ensure that your article fits their publication requirement. And for this purpose, you can also look at the author guidelines that are given by each of these journals. Now, once you've confirmed that your article fits the journal publication requirement, the next thing is to decide that which journal are you going to submit your paper first to. And for that, we need to look at the journal metrics. Now, there are many journal metrics out there, for example, impact factor, side score, eigen factor, etc. But in general, till date, majority people follow the impact factor. So what is the impact factor? In simple words, impact factor measures the impact of your journal. And there is actually a formula through which it is calculated, which is the total number of citations that the journal has received in two years divided by the total number of papers published in that journal in two years. So basically, impact factor is directly correlated to the number of citations that the journal receives. All right. So how do you go about choosing which journal to publish first? What you should do is look at the impact factor of each individual journal and then arrange them in descending order with the highest impact factor journal placed at the top and the lowest impact factor journal placed at the bottom. So what you will do is you will start submitting your papers to the highest impact factor journal from your chosen list. And then you will proceed downwards from there until your paper gets accepted. Now, just repeating it again, impact factor is only one of the metrics on the basis of which you can categorize your journals. There are other metrics as well. In fact, if you're publishing for the first time, 
please take help from your professors or senior researchers who will be able to guide you through this process. Now, once you submit your paper to a journal, it undergoes a rigorous peer review process before it gets published. But before we get into that, let me talk to you about Taylor & Francis Group, one of the most reputed publication houses for your articles. Taylor & Francis Group has a portfolio of 2700 plus journals, 300 plus full open access journals and categories ranging from arts, humanities, social sciences, economics to engineering, law and even sports and tourism. I've put the entire list and the form of a link in the description below for you so you can check the category in which you would like to publish in. They also have a wide range of peer-reviewed open access journals again across multiple categories which I've linked in the description for you. The advantage of publishing in open access journals is that it reaches a much wider audience because your readers can get your paper for free. What makes them stand out is one of the most reputed publishers is that every full research article submitted to Taylor in Francis undergoes a thorough peer review process. This means that every article's quality, validity and relevance has been assessed by independent peers within the research field. Now that I've been talking so much about the peer review process, let's quickly understand how does it even take place. So once you submit your article to the journal, it goes for the first step, which is editor assessment. For this editor assessment, the editor goes through your paper and broadly checks whether it fall, falls under the scope of your journal or not. Once your paper passes the editor assessment, it goes to the reviewers, basically people who are experts of that field. Now, these reviewers are also going to evaluate your paper on a number of things. For example, whether your work is novel enough or not, are your results clearly presented? Are your conclusions reliable, etc. At this stage, if they feel that your paper does not fit these requirements, then they might reject it. Or otherwise, if they feel that your work is good, it has potential, but some improvements need to be done, then in that case, they will get back to you and suggest all the revisions that need to be done. At this stage, you should carefully go through the reviewer's comments and make all the necessary changes suggested by them. Once your revised manuscript is ready, you again submit it to the journal and it goes through the entire process again. That is going through the editor, then after that going to the reviewers again. Now again, if the reviewers feel that even after the changes, your paper does not fit the requirement, they might reject it. Or if they feel that, you know, the revisions are good, but few places here and there still some improvements are required then they might again send it back for another round of revision or third if they feel that after all the necessary revisions your paper looks good and fits all the requirements of the journal then it will get accepted and it will go for the publication paper publication can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months so being patient is very important now, if you wish to learn how to write a research paper from scratch and what are all the steps that are involved to make sure that your paper gets published in a reputed journal, then you can join me for my research paper writing course. To know more, the link is in the description. And now, thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic research career ahead.